Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Sunday, December 12, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern. Think the thought that is unthinkable. Practice the deed that is unperformable. Speak the speech that is inexpressible and be trained in the discipline that is beyond discipline, Buddha. The great hidden secret to finding bliss, which we all seek in our lifetime, boils down to one simple thing, keeping our minds focused on what we want and off of what we don't want. That's a toughie. The longer we can hold our attention on the feeling of being open, relaxed, receptive, and appreciative, the more often bliss-filled experiences manifest into our world. Bliss is always found in the last place you'd think to look, in the stillness of purely being here now. For that simple reason, very few discover it, as many cannot sit still. This awesome experience of being pure, pure being, can be found within each of us now. And as we absorb this information, we don't have to believe anything or think anything to find it. We simply have to choose to be still, relax, and open up to to the entire universe. Stop all physical activity, sit naturally at ease. Do not talk or speak, let sound be empty, like an echo. Do not think about anything. Look at experience beyond thought. Your body has no core, hollow like bamboo. It goes beyond thought open like space, let go of control, and rest right there. Telepa. The greatest bliss within each of us is that place that has no boundaries, no rules, no fears, no personal agendas, and no agreements with anyone. It simply is open to experiencing life, feeling into everyone and everything exactly as it is. This openness is deeply eternal loving. It accepts everything as it is. It is a state of perpetual openness that cannot imagine being closed. The experience of infinite joy or bliss comes from this openness. It is an energy that is always abundant generous, giving of itself, and effortlessly feeling the natural positivity of life. This bliss is selfless because it's connected to the ever-present, all-knowing, always connected oneself, the pure source of creation. The smaller ego part of us that is perpetually desiring this or that is temporarily extinguished. This bliss feels too good as it is perpetually giving itself away. The intrinsic value you'll receive from lasting and literally lasting even just 10 seconds of bliss is so amazing, so healing and life transforming that it's not something anyone can put into words. If the state of ecstatic bliss feels too entangled and intangible and otherworldly to grasp, it's because we are unwilling to let go of this world. We are clinging to our thoughts which contain impersonal problems or personal issues. This clinging, in a way, creates heavy feelings such as debt, health issues, 
relationship problems, buried childhood traumas, being on time, motivation for work, etc. I think you get the point. These issues are the stepping stones to step through the pain and choose to uncover this divinely magical energy inside you. Bliss is a state of freedom that occurs instantly when we have released what was once tight or heavy inside ourselves and opened up to a lighter feeling of expansion and spaciousness. We feel the lightness of our being, our light body, which is the spiritual essence of who each of us truly are. This is our spiritual path, the path of lightness, where our main job, is to welcome each experience of life, this life, and then go beyond it. Every thought we have is our ticket to come home. When every idea, desire, judgment, sensation, or belief that passes through your mind is instantly released, it gives you a constant experience of lightness and expansion. Don't cling to any thought any belief or concept about who you are, what the world is, or anything at all. And bliss will follow you like a lost puppy. Believe it or not, we all decided to come here and enjoy life, right? Free from pain. We did not come here to this earth to just remain in pain and continue to suffer. We didn't come here for that. Blissful feelings are our destiny in this lifetime. We wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't. We've just gotten used to our pains, tolerating them by carrying loads of heavy rocks in our backpack up steep, long, enduring mountains. Now our job is to learn how to unload them all and enjoy the journey back home. The heavy negative life experience that we've had in the past are there to give us direction. Think of them as intelligent guides who are giving you the wonderful experience of becoming lighter and freer every day. If your past is filled with anger, then it is teaching you to forgiveness. If your past is filled with anger, then it's teaching you forgiveness. If your past is full of sadness, it's teaching you to find appreciation, joy, and love. Whatever heavy pain you're holding on to is your teacher, forcing you to dive deeper into your truth so that you let go and feel the pure lightness, weightlessness, and joy that comes when they are gone. To bring about peace means to be free from thoughts and to abide as pure consciousness, Ramana Marisha. Deep inner bliss doesn't have to be a lengthy process. Bliss can be experienced in a matter of minutes if you're willing to do the work. This means a deep, self-exploration and honest feeling into what you're holding on to. What's the story behind your pain? What's the feeling behind your story? Let both of these go and you are free. Just make the agreement with yourself to let go of everything that is weighing heavy on your mind. When you constantly are choosing in each moment to let go, then any sticky old pains don't have as much temptation. They cannot lure you to believe they are who you are. By making the choice to become a let go a holic your life can only become lighter and freer. This path of letting go creates a very expansive, spacious, welcoming mind. This type of mind is the best welcome mat 
you can put on the doorstep of your home. Every thought is welcome here, yet cannot permanently stay. This openness towards every thought, which has no rejection inside it, naturally contains an infinite expanding happiness inside. When your mind is truly open and welcoming to any thought, any emotion, any experience, then the universe takes this as a sign that you are ready. You're trusting, open, ready to receive something truly amazing. This is the day when the universe graces you with a life of unending bliss. Now there's five, there's five secret steps that will empower us to find bliss wherever we are, no matter who we think we are or what life situation you may be in. And the first one is accept yourself as you are. If you want to find the greatest divine bliss inside you tonight, the first and perhaps most important step is to start with accepting yourself and your life exactly the way it is right now. Don't think about what you need to change, improve, or get rid of to make you a or your life better. Just start with accepting everything inside you exactly the way it is and know that within this feeling of self-acceptance and self-love, which is the greatest gift you can give you. By deeply accepting yourself, it becomes easy to slip into appreciating yourself and you soon begin to see all your opportunities for growth, problems, as exciting adventures to explore. Flipping on the self-acceptance switch as often as you can light the pathway to bliss as the love you let in will advance your soul light years on your inner world. Self-acceptance is the first essential key to get your happy engine spinning and start blasting open the door to bliss inside. Be aware of your addiction to suffering. Whether you want to admit it or not, any of us, on some unconscious level, some part of us is addicted to suffering. Now, addiction may be strong, word here, yet it is essential to see the repetitive patterns we've created within us that create perpetual struggle, strife, mental, emotional changes in our inner world. The thoughts that our mind constantly thinks about can never find peace with our, our, our biggest addictions to suffering. Worries, fears, insecurities, and judgments create a majority of the inter, internal battles and self-sabotaging patterns that people can experience hourly. These suffering habits tend to be very sneaky and are often the main reason why most people believe they cannot enter this ideal state of bliss. Once you've looked inside yourself, come to know yourself and identify with what your habit is. You can transcend it. The moment you do, you will find yourself slipping down the slope of joy, and oh, what a ride it is. Something that you may find interesting is that 99% of our worries never come true. And the ones that did manifest were karmically unavoidable. It is said that worrying is praying for what you don't want. And basically, it's just negative thinking about the future. The worrying habit is often the hardest habit to overcome for any of us, yet can be easily transcended once the mind stops believing that holding on to these vital concerns are key ingredients to maintaining a successful life. Once you are conscious in each moment that each one of your thoughts manifests into your life, you can only think positively about yourself, the future, and you start to feel like a living, breathing success. As you realize how this habit is merely an unconscious addiction that keeps us powerless and irresponsible for our divine manifesting power within, we will completely release this pattern of suffering and try out something new. Let go of any attachment to being right or happy. 
Let go of any attachment to being right or happy. Now, you may not realize it yet. Much suffering is created by being attached to your beliefs, opinions, and thinking that these will make you happy. What would happen if no action event, person or thing in your outer world created happiness for you anymore? Where would you find happiness? Happiness is an inside job. The key to finding real joy is never in changing anything out there. It comes from dropping all attachments to your opinions and beliefs about how your life should be. The greatest secret to finding happiness is diving into your inner world and finding peace with all conflicts circulating inside you. When you are no longer attached to anything or anyone in the outer world to make you happy, you take the reins back on your life and you can find pure joy inside your soul, however and when, wherever you are. Unleashing the immense joy you come it, 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 inside you comes easy to those who know how to relax their body deeply and completely while maintaining in this present moment awareness. This means your body is relaxed, yet your mind is vigilantly alert and watching what thoughts are showing up without you emotionally getting identified with them. Stop doing all those things that you think will one day make you happy. Instead, just practice relaxing into whatever happiness is in your body today. Try it. Relax into your heart. Surrender to the very center of your being. And breathe deeply here for a few minutes until you find an equanimity within your mind. It is a law of nature that you cannot live in worry, negativity, or fear when your body is physically at peace. When every tiny muscle is relaxed and completely still, every concern, fear, worry, and negative thought will have disappeared from your mind. The mind and body behave as one unit. And when your body... And when your body is at peace, you'll instantly drop any attachment you have to how your life should be or how your friends, family, work, money, and all those things which are responsible for making you happy. The more you can master the experience of living in a relaxed body 24 hours a day, the more impossible it becomes to getting attached to anything in the outer world for making you happy. When you start to abide in this divine, infinite realm of love, loving energy inside you, you'll wonder why were you ever searching for it out there. The day you discover this profound inner peace in the most stressful, boring, or ordinary, ordinary situation in your life, you'll become a huge ball of peace, love, joy, bliss. And sit back and watch your ego's perpetual efforting. When your mind has completely stopped making any effort to resist negative thinking and release that unending push towards positive thinking, that is the same day the freedom will find you. When you can sit back and watch the mind without being involved, eventually in time, it will give up its perpetual struggle. By making the simple choice, to back off from your inner thinker and step back, period, below or behind these thoughts, you become the overriding master of your mind. It is ironic, yet the bliss we are all seeking is first initiated through the mind's imagination, yet it is truly discovered when you let go of the mind completely. The lightest and highest feeling of bliss cannot be found by forming any one thought or belief with your mind. That would narrow and squeeze your mind's experience of life even tighter, like caffeine does, and not allow these cosmic blissful sensations the room they need to enter. True bliss is only found through divine openness and receptivity. When you are 100% free from all the ridiculous efforting of the mind, having no attachments to any agenda it forms, 
no attachment to any desire or disposition, you will fall into a deeply relaxed and sweet heavenly trusting space with life and bliss will take you over. There are moments in everyone's life where we get a glimpse of this succulent, spacious, peaceful place inside our minds. Yet, we will notice that this space, the mind, is nowhere to be found and you feel even more conscious, alive, aware, and awake. This is the experience of your very essence, your innermost nature, the soul that you are. The feeling is so pleasant that you don't want to form any desire or agenda or that would create too much pain. This spacious place is where your real freedom abides. It also, it allows you to be free of the mind moving backward or forwards in time. Because when you're in bliss, you have no fear. You have no worries or memories to deal with. When this grounded spaciousness finds you, you will be arriving in the beloved land of bliss. It is an experience that is meant for those who are ready and willing to be touched by the divine. Practice being completely silent and still When you have fully emptied your inner container of plans, agendas, fears, worries, concerns, and positive thinking, your brain may not know what to do with itself. It will most likely try to reform some random idea to hold on to to give it some stability. When your body is deeply relaxed and your mind is truly empty, make the golden pillar of your life total silence and stillness. When you reach the mountain peak of consciousness, everything is divine, divinely still. These profoundly quiet moments with an instantly paved fresh new neuronal pathways in your brain for having many more blissed out experiences of the life. To arrive at complete stillness, it takes tremendous courage. You must have vigilance with the mind the strength to hold on to stillness when you cannot, and the trust to let go of the process all at the same time. By deeply trusting everything that shows up, when you venture into the unknown empty zone of no mind, this totally quiet and profound stillness will pour into you. The more time you spend in stillness than bliss, to become your ordinary mode of operation. The first time it happens, you may be able to handle it for a few minutes, yet with practice, you'll get better at it. And when you can hang for a few hours in this cosmic space, it will totally alter your life and everybody else's life that you know forever in the most positive ways. As you discover that your real work here on this earth is not out there. It is yet finding the pathway to bliss within. All of these steps will naturally unfold for each of us. The greatest experience of our lives is being filled with bliss all day and night long. All we care to do and need to do is just open our minds to this possibility. Follow this information and you'll soon start, it'll soon start seeping in. The experience of complete bliss is our soul's destiny. Why make up some ridiculous reason that you don't deserve it? We are all a mixture of both human and divine. And so it is our divine right to own this joyous sensation So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax these bodies, head to toe, inside and out. Focus on the breath. Easy in through the nose, easy out through the mouth. Move into the now by focusing on the breath. The breath is divine positive energy. Why is it divine? The soul enters the body, powers the body. The body then produces oxygen to sustain itself. 
It breathes in and it breathes out, takes in oxygen and pushes out carbon dioxide. And it sustains the physical body that the soul is in, the God, you, me, all of us. Focusing on our breath, relaxing the body. It means that we dump all the garbage, all the crap that we all carry. All the anger, all the stress, all the ego, all the fear, all the frustration. And let it all go. Because we're here to live in bliss. All of us are. We're not here to suffer anymore. Be in pain. Worrying about this. Worrying about that. Being afraid that your ego is going to get bruised. All of these things. The more anger that you release, the more it will destroy you. It's a proven fact. What you put out, you will receive in return. Vindictiveness, manipulative, disorientation, ego dictating, pulling, pushing you, the mind, imagination, conjuring up more and more negative frequencies, more and more deeper. You see how those paths happen? But we're here to be in bliss, not to worry, not to stress, not to fear. And we all know that fear, worry, stress, all of that is an illusion. And I think most of us know it's an illusion. But it's like, well, how do we step away from that illusion? Move into the heart mind. Focus on your breath. Stay in the now. The now is all we have. We don't have yesterday, and we don't have tomorrow. Now is all we will ever have. And when we begin to really embrace and understand that, with deep understanding, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, and and divine, deep gratitude, then we move into bliss. And bliss is... Is, is such a high that it's difficult to hold on to it even for a minute. But once you do, and you'll continue to practice, it'll be longer and longer and longer. So relaxing our bodies is to, to practice to the point where you're in a relaxed state, a deep relaxed state 24-7. Because we have choices. Would you care to be in turmoil and stress and fear and anxiety and anger and disgruntledness? Or would you rather be in bliss? Because the first part of that is all in the external world. Has nothing to do with who and what you are. But if you care to embrace it, then more will be sent to you. And the more you embrace, the more you're going to get. Dangerous road to travel. So when you relax the body, how do you know your body's relaxed? You'll know it because you will feel literally light as a feather. It won't be heaviness. The ball and chains around the ankles, the yoke on the shoulders won't be there. The incessant mind chatter that we all have won't be there. These are all signs that you'll know. Chatter's gone. I'm in stillness. I'm in peace. My body is relaxed. I'm in the now. I'm focused on my breath. And then when we know this, and we, and, and we understand we're not these bodies. We're not the personality. We're not the character. We're not the clothes, what we have what we know, it's none of that. We're the God within the body. And we are etheric 
spiritual energy. And when you look inside the body you're in, and you'll see these lights that go from the tailbone all the way to the top of the head, and they're beautiful, seven, seven different colored lights. Those are known as chakras. What's the definition of chakra? Wheel. They're wheels of light. You, you know, all of us, flow through these wheels of light. And they're connected to every single part of these bodies, right down to the quantum core. So we're flowing through these bodies. All of the organs, all of the blood, all of our tissue, everything, emotions, personality, character, we as gods flow through them. So it's pretty apparent that we will eventually discover that we are the power of healing. We'll be able to heal these bodies in the blink of the eye. Now, we also know that the soul is heaven. Heaven isn't a place. It is you. You're the God. You're the heaven. Body's the earth. Heaven on earth. And we all are consciously aware we wouldn't be in this meditation. And what does consciously aware mean? It means that we know that we are of and from the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest, eternal love. That's what we're made of. So we're heaven on earth, literally. And every step we take, we're creating paradise, literally. Not only that, we're shining our light 360 degrees, 24-7, blasting everyone and everything. All life, the highest supreme value in the universe. So if you were to take a trip outside the planet, far enough out so you could see the whole entire planet, you would see that the planet glowed with 8 billion gods. Not only that, you would see that all the lights in the universe surrounding dim in comparison to it. Now we know that, that parts of ourselves, the gods that we are, are asleep. They aren't woken up. They're asleep. They'll be with us because they're part of us. But then there's other parts of us, the gods that we are, that are awake, consciously aware. And these are in the Googaplexes. Googaplex, fill, one Googaplex fills this entire universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. They come in trillions of Googleplexes from trillions of directions and trillions of universes. No matter if we, if we appear to be a, a billion light years apart, we are one. The gods within the physical vessels that we inhabit are one. So this is all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. So it's the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. The ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Christ, El Moria, Medantia, Pell, Thoth, Yala, Yeshua. all the off-worlders, galactics, and celestials, all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, Agartha, and beneath earth, 
all of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. And like on this planet, all we we have eyes, of course, for these bodies, but what we we only see one percent of what is. We don't see the different light spectrum, UV, infrared. So we don't see these light energy beings. Now, we are familiar with a small group, and part of that group we interact with on a daily basis. Fairies, sprites, elves, gnomes, dwarves, trees, trolls, elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood. Would these bodies be able to stand us as the God if there was no air? No. If there was no water? No. And most likely if there was no wood. Or no fire. Intimately connected to the magics. Mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur. Now, the archangels, they're a civilization that vibrate at a different frequency than we do. That's why we don't see them like we see each other. But we meet with them more than we know. And we don't always identify with that. But sometimes it just dawns on us. We get a feeling in our hearts where we say, that was an angel. And then you experience a little bliss. And they have the same message, but they've been delivering it in a plethora of ways for thousands of years. And what it comes to is that isn't it absolutely magna glorious to be alive in this body? And it is. It's blissful. Because when you really, really understand to be able to taste, touch, feel, laugh, cry, smell all the things we do in these physical bodies but as the gods that we are within the bodies we don't have any of that we don't touch taste sense we don't eat food or drink water we don't do any of that can you see how we can get so seduced with these bodies to get to the point that all we believe is out there. Well, all along, it's been in here. So it is absolutely magna glorious. Now, if you wish to have any of the archangels surround you, cherubim, seraphim, archetypes. Just ask, and they will. Tens of thousands, tens of millions. And you'll experience bliss. Now, the ascended masters, they have mastered ascending into physical, out of physical, they hold pure consciousness, pure God form. We have ascended into physical, we are mastering physical, and we are creating our experiences to perfect our creation. Now the off-worlders, the galactics, the celestials, we're, very, we're, we're familiar with a very small number of them, small group, over a thousand species travel through the solar system every day, trillions throughout the universe is every day. But this one group, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Felines, the Zeta Reticuli, the Anunnaki, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion. And this particular group has been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, and freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage 
and our own self-imposed slavery. In the, in the hundreds of millions, consciously aware, gathered, arm in arm, hand in hand, so to speak, in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And it continues to intensify, and it continues to expand. We immediately form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This light emanates from the God source the kingdom of God, that which we are, each and every one of us in these bodies, as one. And this is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, purest eternal love, gratitude and peace, and we're flooding this planet 24-7 infinity, head to toe, inside and out, all life, the highest supreme value in the universe. Now we begin to ascend above the planet, immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. And the best way to describe it is that it's like this never seen before grand finale fireworks show. It is like a never seen before massive laser light show. And it is like a never seen before ballroom mirror globe light show, except the globe is about a trillion times bigger and a trillion times more intense. All of this combined flickering and flashing, sparkling, reflecting. And so, curious, so we look at the reflective point. We get in closer and we see it's a little tiny microscopic mirror, perfectly etched. So we go inside and we discover something truly amazing. That is life as we all are. No matter what we have inhabit, we are life. We are energy. We are freedom. We are teaching, learning, learning, teaching. We're either being a student, a teacher, a teacher, a student, or both. Constantly. A bug in the rug, a fly on the wall, a bird passing over. A walk in the park. The trees. The sky, the clouds, everything. We're learning from. But see, we get, so, we get so distracted on this external, material, physical world that we don't spend any time in the development of our spirituality, the understanding, the discovering that we are the God within this body. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that we are the power of healing. We're then met with the violet, blue, purple, flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We were then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that from head to toe, inside and out, infinity, we are imbued with a white fire armor, emanates from the God source, the kingdom of God. You, all of us. And it protects us. So no lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, no demon possession, no attachments, ever, ever. Can't be seduced, it can't be penetrated, can't be manipulated, can't be eliminated. And all of these lower dark matter, five matter frequencies can't come around us. They, they'll, they'll vaporize, they can't. You can't hold 
a, a high dimension and a low dimension. It doesn't. It, it there's. It breaks the law of the universe. You can't hold a high dimensional frequency and a low dimensional frequency because the lower dim dimensional frequency disintegrates, fragments, disappears. Yet, only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, greed, anger, fear, envy, hurry, revenge, you will create a breach in your white fire armor. Enough so to allow lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Now you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a double column of light. First part of the column is, is the, the purple transmuting flame. We created this part of the column of light to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. We are then met with the second part of the column of light, the violet ray. This is a column of light we created to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony of the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest eternal love. Gratitude and peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all, the gods that we are in these bodies, that we are the sun, sunlight. We are the sun rises and the sun sets. We are the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the mountains, the trees, the forest, the soil, the rainbow, the rain. We are literally everything, and everything is us. So the next time you view a sunset or a sunrise, or a starry lit night sky. It is you that's the beauty, the God that you are, the divine, the majesty, the serenity, the peace. It is you. When you see a sunset, that is the God that I am. When you say rivers, lakes, stream, or ocean, that is the God that I am. The sunlight, that is the God that I am. There's no separation. There never has been. We continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us decide to step out of our physical form and hover effortlessly above it. If we're carrying physical form. And why do we do this? Well, because we can. We come into full contact with this massive crystal light tower. We created this tower. It's larger than the solar system and beyond. In the center of the column, we see this oblong sphere. The center of the sphere is a golden white ball of light. It is surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light. Almost looks like infinity. There's just so many. And we discover that the golden white ball of light is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. And then gratitude comes. And then well-being. 
and then gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness. And then we have bliss, and joy, and peace. Then we have tranquility and benevolence. We have great prosperity, great abundance. It is unending. Every one of us on this planet deserves the best of everything completely. There's just like this big misty cloud and it looks electrified. You can see kind of like flashes almost looks like lightning. And you see all of these vibrational frequencies of flashes and colors and sparkling and reflecting. And it absorbs into us. And it's like a warm embrace that never ends. And we discover that all of this is a reflection of us, the gods within these bodies. Now, at the top of this crystal light tower, we designed it so that the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, 24-7, infinity. And this is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. And we're flooding everyone, head to toe, inside and out, the highest supreme value in the universe. Now, we are drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is a drop, drop to the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It's that center circle. We all created this sphere almost four years ago. It houses over 1,700 of our meditations in perpetual motion. These meditations don't fade. They don't weaken. They don't go away. They intensify and they expand. Tap into them anytime you want. That is why this sphere can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. This is why it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. Surrender is the secret key to all of our enlightenment today. The moment we surrender to the internal battle and be submerged in the actual experience of it, it disappears. You're having trouble surrendering. Let your greatest fear arise in you. Face it directly. Let go of anything you're attached to. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close the sound.
take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. The mind cannot keep up with consciousness. It is too fast for the mind. The mind is always getting caught in the past and future. When we are totally in the moment, there is no mind. You are sitting and being silent, being open to everything and resisting nothing. Realize that it is coming from either a fear of loss or a fear of separation from the source. The meditative mind happens once the feeling of whether you want to change is fully experienced and dissolved. The meditative mind happens once the feeling of whatever you want to change is fully experienced and dissolved. Take this with you for the rest of the day and for the evening and night and the following morning. We will return here Monday December 13th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call.